Oh, God, it's been a tough day. <laughs> like, really tough. Oh, my God. Um, a realtor guy I know was uh, bit by a tick uh, on his derriere, and uh, he said he was scratching it all the way home, which kind of sounds funny, but I don't know what was uh, in uh, that tick, but he had to go to the emergency room. It uh, swelled up like somebody had implanted a baseball underneath the skin. That's pretty terrible. Ticks actually carry some really... Nasty. You ever heard of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever? I mean, talk about deadly. Whoa. Thankfully, most of Kentucky is kind of free of ticks, except for Western Kentucky. I have a farm out that way. I uh, wanted to talk about um, LED lighting. I've actually spent, seems like most of my life, uh, studying lighting and uh, have all sorts of uh, neat lighting devices. And I love making videos about things that. Nobody else discusses, and I wanted to talk about uh, many of the countless uh, hazards of LED lighting. I've got one of them here. I actually have uh, incandescent bulbs pointing at my face right now, but of course this iPad and this uh, iMac are uh, LED illumination, and they're actually free to oh, a lot of manipulation. I'd like to talk about Project Bazaar here very briefly. Did you know that uh, uh, LED white light is created by using red, green, blue LEDs and the actual frosted filter that's on the end of this is uh, actually opaque to high energy blue spectrum LED illumination. So even though you're seeing white light if I were to plug this in, which is true, you're getting red, green, and blue LED right into your eyes. And the worst part is that the major component that's actually slipping through this is the stuff that's worse for your eyes, blue light. Um, LEDs, of course, uh, generate uh, radiation through electroluminescence phenomena. You can read all about the PN junctions and the actual phenomena of uh, LED uh, technology. Getting into Project Bazaar and some of the uh, hazards of LED lighting, which is really bad. I make a concerted effort to keep LED uh, lighting out of uh, my bedroom, which is where I'm sitting behind the computer, unfortunately, far too often. Um, but I still have uh, an iMac in there that I try to keep as far away from my face as possible. I actually have a special filter that actually scatters the light and it drops the lux value of the light that's transmitted to my eyes. They make a filter for that, uh, not only for laptops, but also too for iMacs. Try to keep as much LED lighting out of my room as possible, but it causes a lot more issues than people realize. And one of the simple things, and there's nobody out there that's mentioned this, except for myself, and I'll get to it here in a second, the serious danger behind LEDs and um, there's a lot of dangers of LEDs, but the one that nobody talks about. And the reason why nobody talks about it is the number of people that actually know the technology behind what light actually is and the dangers of different types of light is about like that many. Well, it's actually a little smaller than that. And getting onto Project Bazaar is actually about uh, high frequency and microwave uh, radiation. And uh, you could actually, they found that uh, you could look up Project Bazaar too. I think it was started in the late 50s. Is they could actually induce six different types of mood state, including fear, anger, soothing, uh, extreme hyperactive tension, kind of like you, you know, you drank 20 coffees in the morning, that kind of uh, really nasty, super miserable hyperactive tension. Uh, but they actually found out that it doesn't have to be super high energy. Uh, uh, radiation, uh, EMF radiation. You can actually do the same with uh, intrafrequency radiation, uh, mid spectrum and low band spectrum uh, EMF, and also, too, uh, visible light. Um, um, by the way, look up a neat little device online. It's called the Photon Smasher. It actually uh, does, uh, it's a neat little music creation tool. It uses a miniature. Uh, solar panel, you can point it at anything and it will actually uh, create these tunes from the pulses of light uh, like uh, neon transformers and LEDs of 
It's amazing the different types of frequencies that come through light, and the one that is most controllable, this is not, to my opinion, but a hardcore fact, the one that is most controllable is LED illumination. I don't know how much you know about uh, Li-Fi. Li-Fi, kind of like Wi-Fi, we all basically know what uh, Wi-Fi is. Uh, Li-Fi refers to uh, light fidelity. And there's a simple little device you can actually hook up at a 9-volt battery and a little LED diode and a phone jack and plug it in to your, like, your phone or your iPad or any music device. And uh, the LED looks like it's on, which of course it is, of any frequency. It doesn't look like anything other than an LED uh, emitting light, which of course it is. And of course nothing emits light, but I've made countless videos about that. That's not what this video is about. And that light is pointed at a little miniature uh, solar panel. And uh, that solar panel actually is uh, receiving the frequencies of the pulsed light, and it does the direct uh, conversion uh, to the speaker. So you're able to uh, transmit either Wi-Fi signal, bidirectional communication, or uh, reception. In the case of your eyes, there's a lot of stuff. You used to actually use uh, subliminal messaging in movies and countless other things, but... Certain frequencies, just like Schumann resonances, are known to, and this is one of the offspring of uh, both the CAA and the NSA of Project Bazaar, uh, for manipulating human beings by um, uh, introducing frequencies that they don't know that it's happening, they just think it's a regular device, but introducing the frequency uh, through their eyes and... Uh, uh, inducing uh, mood states. And uh, we have to ask ourselves uh, about the... You notice that, of course, no one's talking about that anymore, the incredible push towards the LED illumination. Well, LEDs are so wonderful. You know, they take up a little power and they're extremely energy efficient in this uh, energy crisis world that we have. You know, to cut down on the Earth's degradation, we want to... We need to have... Uh, uh, Earth-friendly devices, and that's the reason why it's being pushed. Um, mostly so, as you're well aware, but we have to ask ourselves if actually the push towards LED, LEDs uh, and basically absolutely everything that we have and that we use, including our own illumination, is necessarily because they're so energy efficient and it's so great for Mother Earth. I mean, I have to ask you that question. Do you really think that that's the main push? behind LEDs, both for illumination, light bulbs. Oh, we need to get rid of incandescence. Really? Yeah, the old conventional, most of which, by the way, are, seems like 80% are made, were made in Hungary. But now, you know, it's it almost like it takes an act of God to find a regular old light bulb. Well, they're so inefficient, they suck too much energy. And everybody that's on the road and everybody that's running off of solar and these people that are off-grid, they love LEDs because they have a battery bank and it doesn't take up too much power. And I, I do get all of that. I mean, I absolutely do. But the dangers of manipulation relative to incandescent and the health hazards are absolutely off the Richter scale. One is a level of, of 1 or 1 1.5, and the other one is a level of 1,000. And the level of 1,000 of danger is LEDs, and I'd like to get into that here quickly and uh, shortly. Anyway, you could actually take the LEDs in parallel, a ground wire and a radio wire, and... Um, the actual LED into the solar panel and uh, you're able to transduce uh, music or anything else but these same resonances of frequencies that we can't actually see can actually be brought directly into uh, any... Did I mention the fact that the frosting on these uh, RGB LEDs which is... Well, it's a white light LED. There is a new type of uh, uh, phosphorescent uh, uh, LED base that actually illuminates the phosphorescence for white light emission, but 99.9% .9 of all white light LEDs out there are not white light. They're RGB combinations, and this is uh, blue light uh, uh, transparent, and means the worst part of uh, the, uh, the RGB LEDs, which is the blue spectrum LEDs, are hitting your eyes and causing macular degeneration, cataracts, on and on. LEDs have not been out there widespread for that long. We're actually going to see, and doctors are already reporting this, uh, incredible increases in uh, cataracts, macular degeneration, on and on. My buddy got macular degeneration in both of his eyes. 
He's been staring at a computer screen like this for the past eight or nine years. Maybe not that, that close, but God knows, I hope I certainly don't get it. The serious issue that nobody talks about, and I'd like to get on the other dangers of LEDs, is that LEDs are quasi-point source light. I'd like to get on to a brief thing on uh, point source light and coherency. People think that coherency are like waves, and once again, waves of what? You know, traveling uh, with uh, non-constructive and non-destructive interference, they are in similitude. And that is partially true, but here's an example of, uh, of coherency, for example, why stellar interferometry, interferometry works so great. Interferometry, excuse me, hello there, I'll edit that out of this video. Starlight has coherence links in thousands and millions of kilometers, of course, many hundreds of thousands, excuse me. Starlight, of course, is infinitely more coherent than any type of human-made laser light or any light that we have. And the most distant stars are like ideal point sources of light. Um, A. A. Michelson actually discovered that there's this one star that is extremely incoherent. And once you know it, it's our closest star, which is uh, Betelgeuse. Um, it's just like uh, all uh, starlight, of course, is like a microscopic uh, point source. Um, this is the reason why they actually invented the holography before uh, lasers actually existed. To create these, uh, these uh, early holograms, they just took ordinary mercury arc lamp and passed it through a pinhole, which made it point source light, and the emission made um, a, passed through a monochromatic filter. Actually, it didn't have to pass through a monochromatic filter since it was mercury arc, arc lamp. It was already monochromatically pure, and they just had to pass it through a pinhole. And so you actually ended up with spatial coherence. If you actually look into the technology, I'm not going to go into that in the PN membrane of an LED and all the techno jargon that you don't care about, which I know you don't care about. The point is, and this is the reason why basically 99.9% .9 of lasers are, uh, are LED lasers. The serious danger of LED illumination of any variety, even if it's red in spectrum LEDs, However, once again, all white light LEDs are RGB and that phosphorescent dome. The uh, frosted filter over top of a conventional LED light bulb is a blue transparent because the energy matrix of actually blue light is like 3.1 electrovolts higher than that of red end spectrum light. Is that LEDs are point source light. This is what an actual LED is and that's the reason why 90, basically nearly 100% of lasers now, anyway, are um, LED lasers. They used to have uh, helium neon tube lasers, and I grew up with those, a huge science nerd, all sorts of uh, uh, technological equipment that I actually grew up with, including liquid nitrogen uh, uh, doers and lasers and so-called superconductors, yttrium, barium, copper oxide, levitation kits, and I did a whole lot of looking into the fundamental uh, nature of a lot of uh, physical phenomena in uh, our world, which of course I guess made me an oddball, but the only reason I've been able to see deeper is because of the fact that I was focused on that in life. Um, the reason why they're convention banning conventional light bulbs is forcing people to go to LEDs is not because they're so energy efficient and they're so long lasting, which they are, and that's wonderful, and I appreciate that about them too. But, you know, this is no different than the, the big push that basically every government's doing to go towards electric cars, you know, save Mother Earth. Well, LEDs are just another variety of the electric car push. The, uh, the side effect of electric cars is they're great for 15-minute cities. You can't go very far. And the great the thing about LEDs is, is that I'd like to get that here in a second. Um, but anyway, LEDs are a monochromatic light. And a monochromatic light is both dangerous and open to, not my opinion, not my feeling, not my belief, but open to endless, endless manipulation. Once again, the, uh, the grandchild of Project Bazaar was they found out you don't need super high energy EMF to induce uh, mood states and manipulation of people. You don't. But you can't do it with an incandescent light bulb. It has to be point source monochromatic LED lights. That's not my opinion. That's a fact, by the way. Repeat after me. All LEDs create a spatially coherent monochromatic light. I'm going to say it once again because it's so incredibly important. And, of course, the main thing that nobody talks about is that LEDs are quasi-point source light, conventional uh, illumination LEDs. 
quasi-point source light, which is basically a fancy way of saying they're lasers. There's a reason why they're so bad for your skin, your eyes, your cataract, to cause uh, a macular, macular degeneration. And all you have to do is induce a frequency that is invisible to you. With the proper tools, you could actually see it, just like a frequency counter, you could see it. But you can induce states in anybody without them having any idea whatsoever about it. To me, and this is a personal opinion, the same reason why they're pushing EVs is the same reason why they've been pushing. Uh, we got to get rid of those incandescent light bulbs. They use too much, uh, they use too much energy, and they're they're energy inefficient. It's like, well, all of that's true, but that's not the main reason they're actually pushing them. <clears throat> Let me say these words, and I'm not going to make a declarative statement on this, but urban pacification through LED frequency. I mean, it, now, superficially, that sounds like tinfoil hat nonsense, <laughs> but it's absolutely true. This has actually been proven in tests by inducing frequencies through people looking at LED light, whether it's through their computer screen or whether through it's the light bulb actually plugged in overhead or at the lamp pointing at you as you're doing your work, you can actually induce mood states in people. And that is, by the way, declaratively urban pacification. You don't have to, you don't have to go in anybody. You want to pacify the people? Just send out a frequency that uh, you have uh, harmonic resonance with that uh, causes an oscillation of frequency in the LED illumination emission in anybody's house, and you can induce those mood states. That's not conspiratorial. That is proven fact, by the way. Go look it up. Don't take my word for it. Go look it up. Um, chief among the major health concerns of uh, blue light uh, and green light LEDs, the ability to suppress the production of melatonin, the hormone that actually regulates uh, sleep patterns, of course, in human beings and organisms. Numerous scientific studies, actually endless ones, have warned about the increased exposure to uh, red and green LED uh, uh, EMF. And drastically worsen people's sleep habits, which turns into varieties of chronic health conditions, uh, variety of chronic health conditions over time. Now, this is a statement from me. You could choose to agree with it or not agree with it. Uh, doesn't matter to me with one area. I'm about 2,000% certain that somewhere on the magnitude of 70%, we're all you know, overtaxed, we work twice as hard, we make half as much. There's all sort of pressures in society that we didn't even have 10 years ago. But I assume somewhere around 70% of uh, current human mental issues, I was going to say insanity, you know, everybody's just completely bonkers, you know, off their rocker, is uh, due to LED overexposure. LEDs do bad things to us. It is quasi-point source light. Point source, people say, well, lasers, light amplification, stimulated emission, radiation, lasers, coherent light. Well, that's attributionally correct, but what a laser fundamentally is, is point source light. Once again, there's a reason why I got a laser here. It's uh, people think a laser is, by the way, emit out this little finely focused dot. They actually don't. All lasers out there, and most people don't know this, have uh, two or three, if not more, set of lenses in front of them. Lasers don't actually produce these little uh, lightsaber beams of light, and everybody thinks they do, but they don't. You take the little lenses off here. You actually uh, have uh, monochromatic, which this is, and they, I think this is 520 nanometers. It's monochromatic light, and it's also, too, an LED. Monochromatic light, but it's not focused to a little point. There's little lenses that actually focus that. Both of these are powered by LEDs. Do you know there's, uh, of course, we have uh, lasers for reading discs that work off of reflectance. The beam is actually modulated. Well, it only takes a, someone with the IQ of about five to figure out you could do that uh, uh, from the other direction. Instead of the laser picking up reflectance on like a, a computer disk, and the modulation registering is either binary or music, which of course the music CDs are still binary. All you have to do is modulate the laser output with no frequency. It doesn't matter if it works off of reflectance where you actually uh, modulate uh, the laser light or the LED, because both of these are LEDs. Yeah? I got a 5-watt laser back there, also too an LED. Even the really, really powerful lasers now are all LEDs. 
wickedly, wickedly dangerous. Even reflectance accidentally hit something highly reflective. It was about 400 yards away, and it's only a 5 watt. Just the, like, one-tenth of a second of reflectance from that at a 1,000 yards away was, you know, like, a, you know, getting a slugged in the face vis-a-vis -vis my eyes. I mean, I was blurry for the rest of the night. I mean, that... I was, <laughs> my God, that laser is so dangerous and it's only five watts. Um, anyway, I'm firmly convinced that somewhere on the magnitude of 70% of human issues where you know it and I know it. Everybody's just acting nutty. The whole world is switching to LEDs, but the whole world has not been dosing on the LED technology for that long. LEDs have been around for decades. Major use of LEDs have not been around for decades, okay? I'm, not, I'm talking about the major implementation of LEDs by other people. Disruptive circadian rhythms, macular degeneration, mitochondrial dysfunction, phototoxicity. Do you know what LED radiation actually does to the skin? Point source light. Monochromatic point source light, which is what uh, LED illumination is. Because, once again, LED illumination, EMF, is spatially coherent monochromatic light. Once again, please remember how white light is created in an LED. It's RGB LEDs working in unison to create white light. Uh, phototoxicity, damage to retinal cell, macular degeneration, uh, greatly increased risk for age-related macular degeneration, uh, EMF radiation exposure, danger on skin cancer, Internal components, of course, are made up of a lot of dangerous substances, including arsenic and lead and mercury. Um, these are sources of increasing uh, coherency of light. And most people think they know what light. You know what light coherency is? Sure, laser radiation is coherent light. No, no, no. That's correct. Laser radiation is coherent, but that doesn't actually tell you what a laser is. Sure, what well, a laser is light amplification stimulated emission array. That still doesn't tell you what a laser is. Laser is point source. Excuse me, I also got a sneeze. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to edit that out of this video. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, these are sources of increasing coherency. Uh, bright, cloudy uh, sky. Yeah, least spatially coherent. Uh, fluorescent tube lamp. A frosted incandescent bulb, which is not an incandescent bulb. Uh, the sun during a clear sky. A clear incandescent bulb. <laughs> um, a clear incandescent bulb with a non-coil filament, um, like an aquarium bulb, for example. Now we reach LEDs. Up here we have incandescent bulbs on light coherency, and way down here we have LEDs. You know what's right next to LEDs? Because these are both LEDs. This is a laser. I think this is like a 200 milliwatt... Uh, uh, 520 nanometer red laser diode. This is actually a scientific uh, laser pointer, believe it or not, which they don't hardly make these anymore. I think they still do. Most laser diodes are super cheap garbage now. Um, but these are both LEDs. People don't think about that. Because LEDs are point source light, and that's so incredibly important, and nobody anywhere talks about that. Uh, electric, you know what's right? <laughs> the next step above LEDs and lasers for uh, coherency, electric uh, welding arc at 50 feet away. Think how close you are to LEDs. An electric welding arc at 50 feet away. Those are the things that will like permanently blind you if you like look at them for more than a second. Like someone's welding, they got an electric welding arc, and you know, you can't even... You wouldn't even dare think of looking at it, but people stare at LEDs all frigging day long. This, this is an LED, but they'll have LEDs pointing here, LEDs come from the computer screen. And people are neurotic. They're off their rockers. You know it, I know it, the whole world, now that everything has gone to LED. LED, we're saving a ton of money. We got rid of our... This is uh, Jim Bob's grocery store. We switched out all our fluorescent bulbs to LEDs. Our electric bill is down by $200 a month. This is so much more energy efficient, saving us. They last a lot longer. <laughs> they, they use a lot less power. Well, that's good, Jim Bob, but everybody that walks in your grocery store is like, I don't know what it is, but I've been coming to this grocery store for decades, but all of a sudden I got to, like, do this. Yeah, I got to do this. 
in the grocery store. <laughs> I was like, what'd you do, Jim Bob? I've been coming here for 30 years. Who is switch to LEDs? <laughs> so right above lasers and LEDs is electric welding arc. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> People don't get that. They think, well, it's just an LED. It's like, you know what an LED is? Sure, I kind of do. I looked it up once 10 years ago. Really, really very efficient, uh, low power usage. All of that's true. It's dangerous for basically everything about human biology. It's open to, it's not my opinion, by the way. No tinfoil hat nonsense. Once again, it's the grandchild of Project Bizarre. Open to endless manipulation, the grandchild of knowledge from Project Bizarre. Well, you don't need super high energy radiation to uh, cause manipulation. You just introduce the frequencies to the LEDs. Oh. LEDs are really quite da dangerous. Um, this is why they want to ban conventional incandescence. <laughs> fluorescence, all the rest of it. You got LEDs, they last a whole lot longer. Instead of changing your bulbs every two years, now you only have to change them once every 10 years and your electric bill will be, oh, that's great. What's the downsides? What do you mean downsides? There are no downside. There are a lot of downsides to LEDs, a lot. And I am, I put my name and reputation, whatever you think that is or isn't, don't really care, on the fact that an enormous amount of human craziness, anxiety, stress and is uh, caused from oversaturation. Because LEDs have been doing this number for the past 20 years, basically. <laughs> and the past five years, LED uh, use, everywhere you go. Everything. iPads, iPhones, your car, the street lamps, the lamps overhead, the lamp, every, everything. It's gone... <laughs> Just like that. Yes, LEDs have been around for quite a few years. Major implementation, however, only every, every store you go into now. All schools have gone to LEDs because the schools are major tightwads. Yeah, you know it, I know it. All the schools like, oh my God, what happened to the school? Last year it was kind of okay, I hated school, but now I, I got to do this. I'm like, my eyes are watering and I feel dizzy. It's like, oh, we switched to LEDs, but that can't be the cause of it because LEDs are safe. No, they're not. I'd like to cut this video short without talking super endlessly about LEDs, a couple other things, but uh, I hit all the major points on this. If you ever want to contact me, my information in the description below. Any donation is always warmly welcome. Just be careful. Don't get too close to LEDs. Try to eliminate them if you can. Yeah? Thanks so much for watching. Bye.